If you love nature, then today's video is for you. I'll show you how to create some budget-friendly and totally unique botanical theme decor using easy-to-find supplies and thrift store finds. From upcycled clocks, boxes, and baskets to a one-of-a-kind lantern, I've got botanical decor you've never seen before. <laughs> How'd you like that rhyme? All right, let's get started. I wanted to see if I could create a lantern using sticks from my yard. So I cut four large sticks to the same length and eight medium sticks to the same length. I found a square piece of wood in my scrap wood pile and I began hot gluing the ends of each of the four large sticks to that piece of wood. After gluing on each individual stick, I turned the wood over and added a brad nail from the bottom to help hold the sticks in place. Then I hot glued and nailed a medium sized stick to each of the four sides of the scrap piece of wood. I used my outdoor pruners to cut the medium-sized sticks to fit each of the four sides of the piece of wood. Next, I glued a stick at the top and between two of the large sticks on the right-hand side, and then glued another stick between the two large sticks on the left-hand side. Then I glued a stick to the top of the two large front sticks and another stick to the top of the two back sticks, cutting the sticks with my pruners to fit as I went along. I added a nail in each of the four corners to help those last two sticks stay in place. Then I cut four very skinny sticks and glued one in each of the four corners and then gathered the opposite ends together in the center to create a little roof for the lantern. Next, I hot glued sheet moss in any spot where two sticks came together. This not only concealed the joint, but it also added extra reinforcement. I decided to add a bird's nest and some flowers and greenery to run up the sides of a couple of the large sticks. To add to the botanical theme, I cut out a couple of the top transparent portions of some Dollar Tree butterflies and hot glued those to the lantern. Due to the sticks that I had glued around the base, the lantern was not sitting level. So I added some felt pads to the underside of the wood scrap to lift it up a little bit. frequently purchase very inexpensive metal wall decor at the thrift store to repurpose in other projects. I used wire snips to cut off the flower to use in this project, but I'll be using the butterflies later in the video. To highlight the copper color of the petals, I lightly brushed on some orange acrylic paint around the edges of each petal. But you could paint over the entire petal if you want a different look. To add some color and texture to the flower, I popped the center out of an old sunflower that was in my floral stash and hot glued it to the center of the metal flower. Then I took the stem from that sunflower and hot glued it over the metal prong on the back of the metal flower. This next part was inspired by my friend Julie at Julie's Designs and Signs. I had a decorative wood scrap that had been cut from something. I used some antiquing wax to stain the top to match the rest of the wood. 
When the wax was dry, I drilled a small hole in the center. Then I cut away about an inch of the green plastic surrounding the wire at the bottom of the stem so that I could insert that wire into my drilled hole. I drilled a second hole and then repeated the process to add a few leaves next to the flower. I had an idea for creating some butterfly wall art that I wanted to try. I took three fabric butterflies from Dollar Tree and cut away most of their styrofoam bodies on the back side so they would lay flat on an old wood sign from my stash. I spray painted both sides of the butterflies with a coat of Zinsser primer and when the paint was dry, I arranged and hot glued the butterflies on my wood sign. I glued and pressed them as flat as I could. And then I began applying a thin coat of joint compound over all three butterflies. I spread it around with a small spatula and with my fingers, covering the entire surface of area inside the frame. Once it was dry, I could see that there were some spots that needed a little bit more of the joint compound, and I brushed this on with a small paintbrush. When the second coat was dry, I used some 220 grit sandpaper to carefully sand away some of the texture. Next, I painted over everything with some off-white chalk paint. I covered the flowers, the joint compound, and even the frame. When the paint was dry, I distressed the edges of the frame to help distinguish it from the plastered area. Then I added a sawtooth hanger to the back and gave the back a fresh coat of the same off-white paint. I liked the way it looked at this point, but I was curious as to what it would look like if I applied some watered-down antiquing wax. I brushed a little bit on at a time and then I immediately dabbed off the excess with a paper towel. I thought it gave it a very interesting aged appearance and so I decided to add some botanical words below each butterfly and I used some old IOD transfers. Unfortunately, they did not stick very well to the antiquing wax and they pulled up a few spots of the plaster. I don't know, I think I'm gonna paint over it because I think that I preferred the way it looked when it was all white. Let me know what you think. I picked up this cute wall basket at Goodwill and gave it a couple coats of Coastal Sage spray paint. Later in the video, I'll show you my trick for spray painting outdoors when it's really cold outside. I had an old clock face left over from an old project that I wanted to insert into the front of the basket. So I traced around the back of the clock face and then cut a hole in the front of the basket. I wanted the clock to fit in the hole snugly, so I was careful not to cut it too big. Then I used hot glue on the inside of the basket and on the outside underneath the clock rim to hold it firmly in place. Inserting the clock caused the basket weave to move around, so I touched up the paint with some agave chalk paint. Then I used a little caulk to fill in the gap between the basket and the clock frame. I let it dry overnight and the next day I came back and painted the clock frame and the caulk and touched up other areas of the basket as well with some agave chalk paint. It was already looking pretty cute, but you know I couldn't stop there. I glued a piece of lace ribbon around the top of the basket. Then I rubbed on a floral transfer to the front of the basket. This transfer was left over from a botanical package that I purchased on Amazon some time ago. 
Transfers do adhere really well to painted baskets. However, due to the uneven texture, they do often tear or break along the basket weave lines. So I distress the image with a sanding block to make it look intentional. Then I hot glued some letter beads around the top of the clock to spell out the words springtime. I find these little beads to be darling. But let me know, what do you think? Do you think they're cute or do you find them juvenile? When I was looking through my bin of butterflies, I came across this gold plastic one and decided it was time that I used it. I decided to attach it to this piece of thrifted wood wall decor. I spray painted the butterfly and two Dollar Tree hooks with some white zensor primer. Then I arranged the hooks on the wood decor piece drilled holes, and attached the hooks with screws. Then I painted the butterfly, the hooks, and the screws with some off-white chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the butterfly with 220 grit sandpaper. I removed the little hanging ring from the back of the butterfly. I figured out where I wanted the butterfly to be on the piece of wood and then I drilled a hole in that spot. I found a screw that was just long enough to go through the piece of wood and into the plastic body of the butterfly without going all the way through the butterfly. And finally, I applied a coat of clear wax over the chalk paint on the hooks and on the butterfly. I have no idea what this next thrift store item is, but I think it was intended to be table decor because there's no hanging hardware on the back. I hope you'll leave a comment if you know what this is. I unscrewed the nuts on the back and removed the metal rack so that it would be easier to paint the piece of wood. I gave it a couple coats of an off-white chalk paint and when the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the edges with 220 grit sandpaper. Then I applied a trailing ivy vine from the Whispering Willow IOD transfer package. Transfers apply easily and quickly to smooth surfaces like this one. Then I added a bird transfer down below the ivy. It was from the same IOD Whispering Willow packet. I popped the metal rack back into the wood and reattached the nuts on the back side. Now I needed to think of something to make to put in this rack. The idea of painting and decorating little peat pots has been around for quite a while. And it just so happened that these pots were the perfect size to fit in my weird metal wall rack. I painted the peat pots with a very light and uneven coat of white chalk paint. Then I applied a few small floral transfers selected from the new IOD transfer packet Mio's Pages. Because I hadn't fully painted the pots and because the pots were textured, it took a fair bit of rubbing to get the transfers to adhere to each of the peat pots. Then I hot glued some Dollar Tree burlap trim around the top of each pot. If you just want to use the peat pot as a little basket, 
drill a hole on either side and run some twine, wire, or a piece of faux vine through the holes to create a handle. I hot glued a small piece of styrofoam into the bottom of the pot and then began adding some faux greenery and florals to the pot. I also cut out one of those Dollar Tree transparent butterfly stickers and hot glued it on to the handle of my little pot. I tied on a coordinating bow and I was done. I still had the metal butterfly wall decor left over from an earlier project. And so I gave the butterflies a couple coats of the white zensor primer. Then I separated the plies of a botanical paper napkin, saving just the top printed layer. Then I applied a thin, even coat of Mod Podge to the top of one of the metal butterflies and carefully pressed the paper napkin over the Mod Podge using my fingers and a paintbrush to smooth out any wrinkles. Then I went over the top of the napkin with another coat of Mod Podge. I repeated this process on the second butterfly and then set them aside to dry. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I used a piece of 220 grit sandpaper around the edges of the butterfly to remove all the extra napkin. I used an angle grinder to cut a piece off of the metal rod on the back side of the butterflies but a jigsaw with a metal blade would also work well. I decided to add the butterflies to the front of this old metal birdcage that had once been a clock. I set the birdcage on a large piece of cardboard and then set it inside a small tent that I have in my garage. I spray painted it white and then I carried the cardboard with the birdcage inside to dry. I hot glued strips of Spanish moss to the sides and top of a piece of styrofoam. Then I glued the styrofoam on the inside floor of the birdcage. I hot glued an additional piece of sheet moss from the underside of the birdcage to cover the bottom of the styrofoam and to help hold it in place. At first, I thought I wanted to fill the birdcage with a bunch of faux florals, but ultimately, I decided it looked best with just a few greenery stems drooping down the front and sticking out around the butterflies. I considered wiring the butterflies to the front of the birdcage, but then I thought that if I ever wanted to change out the greenery inside, if I just hot glued them to the front, it would be easy to pop them off, and then I could just quickly hot glue them back in place. Lately, I have been crushing on vintage William Morris designs and was thrilled to discover that his fabric patterns are in the public domain. I found an old wood box in my stash and printed out the strawberry thief pattern on a piece of copy paper in a size to fit the lid of my box. I applied a thin even coat of Mod Podge to the top of my box and to the back of my paper image. Then I carefully adhered the paper to the top of my box smoothing out any wrinkles first with my hands and then with a plastic brayer. After the Mod Podge had dried, I used a utility knife to cut off any extra paper along the edges of the box, and then I applied a top coat of Mod Podge to seal and protect the paper. Give my previously painted box a more aged appearance, I brushed on some antiquing wax, wiping off the excess. I 
I hope you enjoyed today's video and were inspired to try some of these projects for yourself. And remember, all of today's projects, plus other vintage and thrift store finds from my personal stash, are now available for purchase on my online store, CanterburyCottageShop.com. I hope you'll check it out. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye for now.